Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. And we are starting a brand new series today, and I want to give you a little bit of background as to what's happening this year. Um, I'm back in college. I'm going for my master's degree in divinity, which means I have to study like a crap ton of theology. And I was going to tell you, theology is the absolute worst topic to ever study because it makes very complicated things more complicated. You would think that you're studying the Bible to make it less complicated, but theology does the exact opposite. Anyway, I had to take a class called the fivefold ministry. Anybody ever heard of fivefold ministry? Right, the Bible says, and God has set in the church some apostles, come on, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, right? And so I take this class called fivefold ministry, and I have to tell you, it convicted me. Convicted me not like I felt bad, like I was in sin. It convicted me to do something about fivefold ministry, okay? The Bible says, apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, we call that the pastor, shepherd, teacher, apest, ministry. And so I sat down after taking that class and I wrote out the entire year of sermons, the entire year, revolving around the apest ministry. So January, we started our series on marriage and relationships in the pastor voice, the shepherd voice. This series that we're starting now in February is in the teacher voice. Pastor Josh is a bona fide five-fold ministry teacher. That's his gifting. He loves to research and develop sermons and teachings and schoolwork. That is not me. So he actually wrote this series in the voice of the teacher. This, so, so the whole idea behind this is in this room, there are people with five-fold ministry gifts. If you're more like entrepreneurial, you you've start businesses, you love that idea, maybe you mowed lawns as a kid or you sold uh, candy in school, like you've always been that person, you're probably an apostle. If you're a person who like points things out and you're saying, man, I knew that was going to happen, you might have the anointing or the calling of a prophet. So we are going to all this year preach to those voices. We're going to preach to the apostle, we're going to preach to the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. And this, this series is going to be in that teacher voice. We are going to be studying the book of Romans. We're going to start from the beginning. We're going to go through. We're not going to study every single verse and every single passage. We're going to study ideas in the book of Romans. And really what our main point in the book of Romans is going to get to Romans chapter 8. That's where we want to get to. But for us to understand Romans chapter 8, we have to first kind of look at Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Next week, Pastor Josh is going to dissect Romans chapter 7 to set us up for Romans chapter 8, where I will be coming back in. Uh, Pastor Josh wrote this series. I have my own stories that I'm putting in, but next week's sermon, he has some stuff that I couldn't preach. He has to preach it. You've got to come and see why I couldn't preach that message, okay? But he will come preach that message next week on Romans chapter 6 and 7. Today, I want to start in Romans 1 and kind of build through Romans 3. Romans 1 to 3, really to 6 and 7, is all bad news. So I'm here today to deliver some bad news. Is that all right? The bad news is to get us to the good news. And the good news is this. Check it out in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, there is therefore now, there is therefore now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's really good news. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Check this out. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You've been set free. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now, maybe you've heard that said before. Sin has been condemned to the flesh. This is why I have such a hard time. So I have such a hard time, Pastor. My sin, my flesh, my flesh is sinful. It's full of sin, my flesh. Okay, let's read that in context. 
Whose flesh are we talking about? Christ's flesh, who of his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteous by his stripes, we're healed. Our sins have been condemned to his flesh, right there, his flesh. I'm going to tell you why we all have a problem with sin, and it's not for sin's sake. It's for your brain. It's what you watch on TV. It's what you scroll on social media. It's what you look at on the internet. That's why your brain wants to sin. Your brain wants to overeat because every other commercial on TV is food. Doggone, wait till the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Every single commercial is about food. Scroll through social media. You're behind your own business. You're on Inst yo, Instagram Reels and TikTok, straight Satan. That's the devil, bro. Because like you're minding your own business. You're watching church videos, and all of a sudden there's a girl in a bikini. Yo! <laughs> I'm being for real. I'm being for real. And then we, we have this stuff going in our minds and in our brains, and we wonder why we're struggling. Listen, when you spend more time, whoo, when you spend more time scrolling pages than flipping pages, hey, somebody, yeah, that, that meant the Bible. You're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem when you're scrolling more than flipping. All right, I'm going to tag that. That's going to be a shirt. <laughs> Let's pray before we jump into the word today. Father, we thank you and we praise you as we get into your word that you open the eyes of our understanding Enlighten us to your truth. Show us things to come in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was just a young man, I was going out to the club one night. My first night club. I was so ant. I'm going to go to the club. I'm going to get my dance on. I'm going to find a girl, and I'm going to dance real close. I had it all planned out. Come on, somebody. You been to a night club? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't. I was going to go to the club. My boy Brian Cruz was DJing that night. I was excited. It was down at Cancun Inn. Anybody ever go to the club Cancun Inn? Hey, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Sinful place. Roll up. Man, my sneakers match my belt. Back then, remember? White belts match your white sneakers, right? I mean, I look, mm, had, no point, had no facial hair back then. Couldn't grow a beard till I was 30. That's why I've overcompensated now. Roll up in my boy's BMW ready to party. Open the car, step out. Can hear the beat from the car, man. The bass from outside. I'm, I'm ready, yo. We don't, get, we don't get one step away from the car and this crowd of guys runs up on us. Boom, runs up, yo, 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 yo. Like, oh, what's up? Now listen. My license says I'm 5'8", but I'm about 5'7 and 3 quarter. <laughs> My boy wasn't much taller. These guys were all 6 foot plus, 6'5", six, 6'7", six, surrounded us. Yo, you talking beef about my girl? Yo, yeah. Now, they're coming after my boy. But you know, if someone's picking a fight with your boy at the club, they're picking a fight with you. They're picking a fight with you. So these guys are coming after him, but they surround both of us, and I know it's about to happen. It's going down. It's beat down time, and I'm going to be involved in it because I'm guilty by association. Huh, somebody? Your parents ever tell you you are who you hang with? Birds of a feather flock together. No, the whole scare you. Well, this was that situation. They're coming after him for something he did, talking trash, whatever, and I'm about to get up on it. So he kind of reaches over. He's got his keys in his hand. He goes, yo, I popped the trunk. I got two bats in the trunk. <laughs> yo! You, I don't know if you've ever known that you're going to be in a fight, but then you know that you've got a weapon. Your heart is pound, like you're, you're shaking. You're, you're, everybody is shaking because it's, listen, someone's about to get a whooping. Someone's about to get an old school beat down. Either me, either me, or these five guys, right? Because you know, you pull out a weapon, you pull out a bat, 
either you're going to crack a head or they're going to pull some jujitsu move, stop it, take it from you, and whoop you with it. <laughs> going down. So I'm like, it's going to happen. So we start just kind of like moving down the car <laughs> to the trunk. Got my hand in it. And just then, this girl, thank God for this girl. I don't know who this girl is. But she comes running out of nowhere. And she was like, no, 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 no. That's not the guy. You got the wrong guy. He's over there. And they're like, my bad. And they just walked away. <laughs> I already had my will filled out. I already knew that I was going to heaven to meet with you. I had to repent that I was at the club first. <laughs> I was right with the Lord, you know? And they're like, my bad. Nothing but my bad. It messed me up. It messed me up because I, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, I literally just got there, but I was guilty by association. They were coming after my boy. And this paints, this paints a picture of what we're going to look at in the book of Romans today. I want to jump to chapter 3 of Romans, and then we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. But watch this. In Romans 3.22, it says this. There is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no distinction. There's no man or female, Jew nor Greek, Gentile, bond, free, slave. No distinction. All have sinned. That's what the Bible says. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all guilty by association. And I know your heart's saying, hey, 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 can we go back to Romans 8 where it was like, there is therefore now no condemnation? For us to understand the good news, we must first study the bad news. For us to fully appreciate and grasp the good news of the gospel, what Jesus Christ has done for us, we must first understand our condition and why Jesus had to do what he did on our behalf. Paul, in his writing here, stresses the dark, tragic state that humanity is in. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You could try, listen, how many of you have ever started like a New Year's resolution and like, God, I promise you, I'm going to read my Bible every day. Or, God, if you get me out of this one, I'll never do this again. I mean, maybe when you were, if you were a Christian when you were a teenager, you did these kind of prayers all the time. If you get me out of this one, I'll never do that again. And guess what? As soon as he bailed you out or whatever happened, you did it again. Ah! Yeah, listen. Why do you think Britney Spears wrote that song? Oops, I did it again. Right? That was a Christian song. That's a worship song. <laughs> When sin entered the world in Genesis chapter 3, it was a global, guilty by association sin that affected every aspect of human being and the entire condition of the earth. Taking a class right now that's studying out ec ecology. Ecology is like the, of the ecosystem of the world. And the concept looks back to John 3.16. How many know John 3.16? For God so loved the world, okay? And so we take that verse and we say, for God so loved the world, the, the unsaved, the sinner, the secular, that he gave his son so they could get salvation. But wonder if that scripture literally meant, for God so loved the earth. That because sin entered the earth and death by sin, sin affecting every aspect of the global earth, the trees, the animals, the water system, pollutants, that there needed to be a redemptive plan, not just for humanity, but all of the ecosystem, all of the earth. Man, check that out. That's how big sin is. That's what happens. We can't understand why trees die. We can't understand why plants wither and lose life. There's really no reason why they should. Life should be get life. Life should continue. We don't really understand why the human body diseases and dies. It shouldn't. It should heal and fix itself. It's the fallen state of sin. And sin has made humanity dead to the things of God. Sin influences our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. Now listen to what I'm about to say. Sin eternally separates 
the unrenewed person from a relationship with God and makes us enemies with God and subject to his wrath. Now again, we have to look at the bad news to understand the good news. We have to look at the past to understand the present and the future. So let's go ahead and look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 in verse 8 says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So maybe you've been in church or maybe you've read your Bible, maybe you've done one of those one-year reading programs where you're going to read through the Bible in one year, and you get to something like this, and you read this, and you're like, oh my God, God's mad at me. God's mad at me because I do unrighteous acts. I do ungodly deeds. I've done bad things. And guess what? Romans chapter 1 is not written to you. Amen. You are not ungodly. You are not unrighteous. If you are a Christian, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are godly, you are holy, you are righteous. Amen. That's not about you. This is the bad news. This is, this is without Christ, without salvation, without God in your life. God's upset at you. There's some wrath. There's some wrath against the sin. But you are not unrighteous because you did an unrighteous act. My son doesn't stop being my son because he broke my TV. Makes him an idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, listen, I'm not saying, no, you ain't my son no more until you go buy me a TV and you got to make it right. There's nothing my son can do to make that right. He broke my TV. Amen. You can't make that right. I'm not going to go take his piggy bank money to go replace my TV. He's my son. It happens. I saw it coming. You know, they got those games with the things on their hands and they're playing it on what's going on. Bow, smash the TV. Saw it coming. I just made all that up. That never happened. But I'm just saying, you can imagine. We do that sometimes, where we get upset as parents. And we think that God responds to us the same way we respond to our kids. Or your parents responded to you when you messed up. This is not to you. And what happens when we study scripture and pastors study the Bible, they readily take scripture out of context. You cannot take Romans 1 through 7 out of context from Romans 8. Romans 8 is the central sphere that tells you what context we're reading Romans in. Yeah. Romans 8 says there is therefore. Therefore what? Because of everything we just read from Romans 1 to Romans 7, there now is therefore. Now. Now. All that was the past. All that was the fallen state, all of that was without Jesus, there is therefore now wow. no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to skip down to Romans 1 verse 32. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, that's bad news. That's bad news. And here's what happens, because I, we can, that can be really scary, and preachers can scare the tar out of people with that. See, if you do bad things, you deserve to die. This is talking about the unrighteous person whose lifestyle is practicing these wrong things. Yeah, see what I'm saying? If someone practices sin, okay. Can we talk about practicing sin when people say that? But they're living in sin. Okay, I really want, I want to address that. Because it makes me very, very angry when people say that to me. But they're living in sin. Listen, if you are 10 pounds overweight, you're living in sin. You're li it's called gluttony. Every time you overeat, you're living in sin. So how about we stop judging other people? How about we get our eyes on our own paper? How about we worry about our own test, our own life, our own struggle, our own brain? Yeah, but look at him. You know, you, you know what we like to judge? We like to judge people who sin differently than us. <laughs> Your sin's okay. You, 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 hey. Your gossip, backstabbing, backbiting, stress life, 
You think you're okay? Because you can hide your sin. Now the Bible says you stank. You took a shower, you put on a suit, you got the cologne on, but you still stank. He says your righteousness, your ability to be righteous is a filthy rags. I don't even want to tell you what that is. That joint is nasty when the Bible says that. Your ability to think that you are righteous and then you can project someone else's self. Come on. Come on, man. We need to figure these things out for ourselves. God, what are you leading me to do? What do you want from my life? How do I please you? This, this verse tells us that we are all guilty by association, and the association is to Adam. Because of one man, sin entered the world, and death by sin. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the guilty by association. I stepped out of that car, I did nothing, I'm coming to club, but they thought it, my boy had done something. He, supposedly he was getting accused of like talking trash about this dude's girl or whatever. It wasn't us, but I'm about to get in a fight because of him. I did nothing wrong. But we have. We're guilty by the fall of humanity. By the fall of humanity. And the idea of sin is so confusing in society and in our culture today. Even in church, we can, I, we can label certain actions as sin. Murder, that's a sin. That's definitely a sin. Adultery, that's definitely a sin. Robbery, definitely a sin. But then we start saying things like pride. Well, that's just a flaw of character. <laughs> Envy. Why do, they, why, why do they get to have a house like that? How come God's blessing them and not me? I do everything that... Uh, that's just a character flaw. That's a personality flaw. That's not a sin. That's a sin. Strife, gossip, overeating, an undisciplined tongue. They're sin. And I know that we want to classify them as something else. So we've even got it down to like classifying cuss words as these are not really cuss words, but these are cuss words. <laughs> like we got all these classifications for things now to somehow make us feel better about things. And I'm just kind of telling you, like, none of it matters. What's your relationship with God? What's your relationship with God? We become so sin conscious that we're not righteousness conscious. We're so sin conscious that we're not grace and relationship with God conscious. And Paul is kind of like saying, listen, I know that you're trying to do all these classifications and kind of judge each other. I've heard people say, I don't go to church. It's full of hypocrites. Of course it is. We are all hypocrites. Every single one of us. Paul tells it to us. He says, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. I war against myself daily. I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to live out this word. But doggone, man, I screwed up every single day. Called hypocrite. I'll tell you this. Listen, we're all going to mess up. None of us is going to be perfect. But stop judging everybody. Stop putting your guilt and your blame and your shame on somebody else. Just that, 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 that's the part that the, the world can't stand. The world doesn't care that you mess up. Just stop acting like you're perfect. Stop pretending you are. And then Paul widens the net. He's like, listen, I want you to know that I'm not just talking to the pagans. I'm not just talking to the Gentiles. I want everybody to know, no matter how you were raised, if you were raised in church or not in church, that all of us are guilty by association. I don't care how good you think you are. Watch this in Romans 3, 9. Now he's bringing it home because he's bringing it to God's covenant people, people who thought that they were just in because of their blood, their, um, their, um, their, their lineage. He says this, what then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin, as it is written. None is righteous, no, not one. Now listen, he's not, he's not saying to those in Christ are not righteous. He's saying to those who think based upon their actions are righteous. Now he's just going in. He's like, you think you're somebody? You think you look good? Right? He's going in. 
No one's righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Is that literally true? No. He's just bringing you to this bad news that say you need a savior. You need a savior. By your own desire to do what's right, you're not disciplined enough to do it. And I'm not throwing any shade, but I bet about 20% of this room has already missed a workout that you said you're not gonna miss from your New Year's resolution, I'm gonna go to the gym every day, and you're already not going to the gym. <laughs> right? Don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. Shame and guilt and condemnation on us. <laughs> we do it all the time. I'm not gonna eat carbohydrates. No more sweets. And then it's somebody's birthday. Well, I can't say it's someone's birthday. It would be rude for me not to have a piece of cake at their birthday. Let's take more insulin shots. Come on. We're all guilty. We're all guilty of falling short of God's perfection. We're guilty by association because our friend Adam stands accused and convicted of sin against humanity. All of us are guilty of falling short of God's perfection. And that's the bad news. That's the bad news. And for some reason, churches get stuck in Romans 1 through 7. And they preach it over and over and over again. And we wonder why people are leaving the church, the church global, by droves. Because all we're getting is bad news. If I want bad news, I'll turn on the news. See, I was about to say a certain station, but then if I said that, people would think that I was politically slanted in one way. I can't do that anymore. Turn on the news. We get bad news. Why would I go to church and get more bad news? So what's the good news? What's the good news, Pastor Mike? Well, we don't actually get there yet. Like, we literally have to study Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to finally get to some good news. And I don't want to jump fully ahead, but I want to say that many of us stand in a crowd of accusations all day long. There's this voice of the accuser of the brother, and the Bible says, that's trying to whisper in our ears that you're not good enough. You're not good enough for God. You're not enough for your family. You're not enough for your kids. You're not enough for your spouse. You're not enough at your job. If you're a little bit smarter, if you weren't so lazy, you could be somebody in life. And there's just these voices of accusation that beat us down all day long. And then we go to church and we read Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And they stop. And they don't go into verse 24. Verse 24 has a transition that says, and you are justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Justification. Just if I had never sinned. It's the redemptive work of the cross. It's the atonement. The literal atonement of Jesus Christ that paid the price for your sin, your sin that was committed to his body on the tree by the grace of God. And I love this word grace because grace is unearned, unearned favor of God. Um, the King James calls it unmerited favor, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God. It's his grace. There was nothing you could do to deserve the justification. So yes, all have sinned. That is the truth, and that's the bad news. But all are justified who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The beginning is good news. I mean, the beginning of this study is bad news. But we need to have that hope for the good news, and we could not appreciate the free gift of salvation without looking at 
the bad news. And I just ask you today, like, what's your theology of salvation? Every single one of us is going to have a little bit different flair of what our theology of salvation is. You have to ask yourself this. Do I believe that I can lose my salvation? That's a theology. You decide that. Can I lose my salvation? Can I lose something I did nothing to earn? I didn't die on the cross. I didn't pay the price for sin. I just accepted it. Can that be taken away because of bad behavior? So here's my theology. My theology is if God Almighty, who knows the beginning from the end, who knows all things, knows everything that I'm going to do, gave his only son, that whoever believes in his only son would not perish but have everlasting life, that he let his son die so I could live. If he did all that and I could then screw it up, that was a pretty bad plan. That was a pretty bad plan. And I know you're like, oh my God, don't say that, Pastor Mike. It's simple logic. I would never put my kid in harm to save somebody who could mess that thing up. He knows the beginning from the end. He took all of your sin and all of your actions and factored it in when he accepted you as his child of God. That's big. That's big. My question today as I close out is this. I got to grab a prop. How many of you have found yourself surrounded by a group of emotions? The emotion of guilt, the emotion of shame, the emotion of anxiety, the emotion of fear, the emotion of unforgiveness. These things can tower around us and intimidate us, back us up. But we've been given a weapon. We've been given a weapon, it's in our trunk. We got to access it. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's the Word of God. It says that you can take that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you can dismantle every thought or precept or concept that comes against the knowledge of God. It literally says that you can put a whooping, a whooping on those things that are trying to back you down and hold you back from serving God in its fullness. The Bible says that sin no longer has power over you, no longer has control over you. Like you can literally put a hurt and put a whooping on sin in your life. We don't have to be controlled by that. We don't have to be controlled by negative thoughts. I know that they look big. I know you're only 5'7 and they're 6'5. I get it. I get it. But this thing right here, this is the equalizer. (laughs) This is the equalizer because... Because right here, yo, listen, I don't know if I should even go, this is, should a pastor be teaching about this in church? You see, you knock the knees out of fear, you knock the knees out of depression, you knock the knees out of anxiety, it drops down to eye level. You take the knees out, they drop to eye level. They ain't so big no more. And they're crying. And they're hurting. Some of us spiritually need to step it up. We need to step it up. Stop being weak, feeble Christians, thinking that the world has more power, so afraid of the devil, so afraid of sickness and disease, so afraid of plagues and calamity and all these things around us. When we got a bat in the trunk, we got the word of God ready to knock down everything to its size. I'm going to throw it in. I'll just tell you a little bit why Christians are so weak and feeble. Because we don't chew on the meat of the word. We ain't eating meat. We ain't eating meat. We we, we ain't really eating meat. We're not eating the word. We're not putting the stuff in that's going to make us strong spiritually. Listen, man. If you're living off of this 30-minute granola bar of a sermon, 
You're going to be starved and anorexic spiritually throughout the week. Looking at someone's meme on social media thinking that one scripture is going to be enough to sustain you bodily, it ain't going to happen. You know, to have even the guts to reach in the trunk and get the bat, that takes some spiritual grit. John tells us this, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, but it's going to be the violent that take it by force. By force. And he's, he's not saying that we need to be going out there picking fights. It doesn't mean that we need to be standing on the street corner condemning everybody. That's not what he's talking about at all. He's saying when the enemy comes knocking, when the enemy comes knocking in your life, when the enemy comes knocking against your kids, when the enemy comes knocking against your family and your soundness of mind, he's saying you need to reach in the trunk and grab out the weapons of our warfare, that they are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm going to put this down. If you're here today, you're watching online, and you've never taken that step from unrighteous to righteous, you've never taken that step to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to offer that to you today, online or in the room. And it's really, it's just accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's in a confession of your mouth and a belief in your heart. So if you're in the room today or watching online, say, today's my day of salvation. Today's the day that I'm going to take that turn. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to start making things right in my life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.